all right quick technical difficulties but we are here and when dealing with the internet always expect we are here and there we go okay so uh i want to say thank you everyone for tuning in for another episode of let's talk photography where we talk camera lighting gear business and everything under the sun photography Okay, now this week you are driving the conversation. That's right. This is an open Q and A for all of you. So get your uh, questions ready and let's get to it. All right, thank you. Welcome everyone to another episode of Let's Talk Photography. Um, we got a great question in coming in from Instagram that I want to cover, uh, before uh, I get into it, I got some other stuff to go over, of course, and I already have a comment. Let's thank you for those dropping comments. So, uh, of course, now with that said, before we get into anything, let's go over the business side of things. All right. First is. Um, of course, I have my photography workshops coming up. You can check out all the details at robertsilverphotography.com. That's right. Okay, robertsilverphotography.com. Okay. Oh, no, no, nowhere else but robertsilverphotography.com. All right. My next one coming up is Intro to Indoor Studio Flash Photography. All right. So make sure you go check out that. And I have many more coming up, too. A beauty photography one coming up, actually. Um, now, if you're not following me, shame on you, okay? Now, uh, I am at Robertson Photography on Facebook, Robertson Photography on Instagram, Robertson Photography on TikTok, and yes, I am at Rob Silver Photog on Twitter. That's right. And if you have, if just in case you're in need of more educational content about photography, whether it's business, gear, news, etc. Well, then you want to go ahead and check out my HBO special to help a brother out. And by supporting me there on Patreon, that's right. I'm on Patreon at Robertson Photography, where I drop daily educational photography content, news updates, and all the above. All right. So go ahead and support me there on Patreon. Greatly appreciate it. It allows me to dedicate more time to creating these videos and other content. All right. Because that's, believe it or not, all this stuff takes time um, and effort and energy. Wow, my latest video, you can go ahead and check it out. It's I do an unboxing and first impression of the DJI RS3 Mini Gimbal. I bought it myself. No, they did not um, sponsor that video in any particular way. And um, I bought it right on Amazon because I needed it for a project. And I was like, you know what? Let me share my experience of unboxing and first impressions. Go ahead and check it out. That's on my YouTube channel. But check it out after the show, okay? So yeah, don't 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 be um don't uh don't don't log off yet. Um 
be on the lookout for my next video where I edit these photos that I took using LED lights. My first LED light portrait. That video will be coming up. I'm recording. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, oh, I'm recording all the editing on Sunday. So I'll have the video out this coming week. So you definitely want to be on the lookout for that video. Okay. It's going to be a cool one. Um, yeah, I'm going to be excited to share with you that. I realize that in order for me to share more of the editing side, I, I or the video where the windows in Lightroom don't disappear like they do when I stream live to StreamYard. Um, I'll have to just pre-record it. So be on the lookout for that. And I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is gonna Photoshop. Well, we'll see. We'll see. So stay tuned for that video. Oh, it looks like we have a couple of comments. That's right. Yeah. Thank you everybody for dropping some comments. Really appreciate it. So we have Oh, Cooley. Hey, Cooley. Thank you. Hey, what's up? Thank you for tuning in. Very much appreciated. Always appreciate the support. And then we have Gene here. Uh, hi, Robert. How do I join? Okay, I am going to send you um, this link. Okay, let me see how I can boopity boop. Let me see here. Let me see if I have your email, G. Okay, you know what? She, go to your Instagram and I will DM you right this very moment, okay? Um, switch my Instagram, here we go. Go to your Instagram right now and I'm gonna send you a link. Oh my goodness. What is it? 586. Six. Three. I hate when it does this, but really security crap just to go to my own channel. Cool. Here we go. Your chi. Looking for you. Let me look for you. Let me look for you. And uh, give me a second, everybody. I, I apologize. I'm trying to get a guest on here. She had some great questions, and I want everybody to be able to hear it. And cool. All right. Okay. Here you go. Log in. Boom. So, gee, I just, I, I, I just literally, literally sent you a, a login. So go ahead in there, and I will be waiting for you to log in. Okay. So there you go. Next comment. Willie goes. Hey, what's a good case for four? 80, 200, and accessories. Oh, okay, 80, 200. That's a great question, okay? Um, and then he follows up saying, what case do you use? Okay, first of all, let's start with the first question, okay? Um, someone just texted me, I, I'm sorry. Oh, you back. Okay. First question. Cases for 8200, since they're nice and compact, I recommend, let me go get my little rolling bag personally, okay? <sighs> oh. <laughs> Bags heavy. <laughs> All right. Now check this out. Okay. I personally use uh Think Tank Photos Airport Takeoff. Okay. They 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 I think they have a version 2.0 now. Okay. But this is the one I have. I've had it for years. It's built like a tank. Most think tank bags, ironic is this tank in it. Bags are built like a tank. I like this because it's super heavy duty. Okay. It's super heavy duty and um, plenty of room for laptop in the front here. 
and um, plenty of room. You can put four eighty two hundreds in here very easily, and some camera gear. I'm just gonna try to make sure my stuff doesn't fall out. Okay, but ah, there we go. You can see I've used this thing. It's been it's been everywhere with me. But you can see I have my Z9, my Nikon Z9 in here, 24 to 70, uh, 70 to 200, uh, 14 to 24, 5 macro, and a 51 to prime lens. And I still have room. You could definitely put 480 200s in here. So again, think tank photo, airport takeoff. Now what I the additional thing I like about it is, uh, like when I go when I go to uh, Vegas uh, for WPPI uh, in just one more month, I like this part. This is one thing I like when I travel. In the back of it, check this out. You have backpack straps. I'm not sure if you can see it, but you have backpack straps right here, and that I like. So in case I have another bag or two, I could just put. The Right on my backpack, uh, uh, as a backpack, and then I can carry my carry-on, and I can move much faster through the crowds versus rolling the bag. So you have both options. You can, you can roll your stuff, right? But then you have these backpack straps, which I really like, super durable, and um, they've saved me tons of time trying to dash through the, through the uh, airport, okay? This will easily, easily... Um, and it's considered a carry-on, by the way. It's like right at the max carry-on. So you could do that. Uh, this will easily carry 48200s in here. The airport takeoff, I think, think photo. Shout out to uh, think, uh, think Tank Photo. Okay. There we go. So, so Cooley, I hope that helps you out. I have several, <laughs> several bags of Think Tank Photo. Um, for my video production bag, I have a whole case over here. It's called a project manager. So uh, it's called a logistic, uh, what is it called? Uh, logistic manager. That's what I have for my videography gear. But for, for, for my photography, it's this bag. That's my go-to bag. Okay. So I hope that helps you out, Cooley. And that is the case I use personally. And it stores all my gear. Okay. Um, Information overload. Yeah, well, you know, I'm all about giving you the deets, brother. I'm all about giving you the deets, okay? Um, oh, it looks like we... Awesome. Okay, we have a guest. and uh, In just a moment, I will introduce her. Um, okay, here we go. What is this? Uh, I want to offer a promotion on channel viewers. Wanna, the price is lower than a competitor and quality guarantee and the best. I don't want incredibly flexible, convenient. Huh. Okay. This is, uh, I'm not sure what that is, but, uh, I will check it out first before I share it with my viewers. I got a message on Twitter on the, on, on Twitch here. Uh, and she, our, our guest for this evening says, Oh no, I have to wait 24 hours for stream art to activate. What? No, you're on board. You're good to go. Okay. And then, uh, Daniel Jeffrey says, Hey, what's up? Yeah. Thanks, Daniel. I always appreciate his consistency in terms of supporting the channel. Thank you very much, brother. And uh, I also have to give him a shout out because he's one of my Patreons. So that's right. Thank you, brother, for supporting uh, supporting uh, the movement here. And question, can you incorporate your drone with photography? A hundred percent you can. Okay. A hundred percent. Chi, as soon as I answer this question, you'll jump in. Okay. And uh, can you hear me? Chi, you can hear me? Okay, good. Love your hair. So I love it. The curls are awesome. Anyway, um, here's the here's the deal. Um, hundred percent. And I, and that kind of goes to back to what I've always tried to share. If you if you're not familiar, I will share it with you. Um, that you have to produce more value as a photographer nowadays. Photography alone will no longer cut it. Go watch my video because um, I practice what I preach, and I'm telling you. The future is bleak. If you're only if you're trying to make an income, whether it be a hustle, side hustle, whatever, and you're just relying on photography, it's gonna get rougher and rougher and rougher by the year. Guarant matter of fact, I'm gonna say by the month. Okay, we have AI coming out. 
you have uh, better cell phone technology. So people are subconsciously lowering the value and appreciation of quality photographers. You have all sorts of things working against us. So you adding value and in incorporating drone photography with your photography, 100% is super smart. Real estate folks are going to like it. And if you could incorporate great your drone photography, because a lot of the drones shoot high quality images, okay? And I believe if you shoot raw too. And if you can incorporate that in terms of the perspective, you can get only with a drone with family shoots or, or or engagements shots, wedding shots. I'm telling you, that's one way to add more value, increase your profitability, guaranteed. So yes, Daniel, experiment with it. Right now, almost you, no, nothing should be left on the table, right? As you know, I've been saying, you have to get into video. You have to get into video. That's not even a question anymore. You need to get into video because you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Now, last week, my assistant and I, uh, Derek, um, tag team, a, um, it was first a photography commercial shoot for a hair salon. And then they came back the next day and asked, can we do video? I may have shared the story. So that income was dramatically increased just because I was able to pr provide video service. One client, way more income coming from that one person just because I could add on videography with my photography. So yes, go full steam ahead, practice with your drone, and find figure out creative ways that you can create images only with a drone and incorporate that into your um package maybe add it as as a as a upsell say hey these are great photos uh, would you like for would you want me to add for an additional x amount uh these kind of shots and already have those images set up so you, they, they can see the perspective they can see what they could potentially get some examples and use it as an upsell boom i think that's great so daniel two thumbs up all right and a hand clap all right and that just may uh, add some coinage to your pockets, brother. That's right. That's what we want to do. We want to do is figure out ways for you to add value and thus add more coins. All right. So there you go, Daniel. Uh, uh, I hope that helped. Uh, Cooley comes in with elections coming up. Are you marketing of, uh, are you marketing for their work? I don't like to get into politics because, um, People take it extremely serious. I don't want it to damage my business. I try to stay apolitical despite my per particular personal perspectives. And I keep it to myself. You know, I go into the voting booth, do my thing. But when it comes to photography, I'm all about the green back. So I don't go red. I don't go blue. I go green. Okay. So I recommend everyone to keep their business to themselves and do what you do. Be respectful of everybody's opinion right? You're allowed to have your opinion. You don't have to agree with everybody's opinion, but everybody's allowed to have their own and keep it to yourself and make that money. Okay. Cause photography, there's a neutral playing field. Let's just keep it creative. Am I, am I right? I think so. Okay. Uh, all right. Now let's, let's get ready. All right. Let's get ready for our guest. <laughs> All right. Hey, Chi, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Robert? I'm good. As you can tell, I am I am pumped off of some serious coffee today. I'll tell you that right now. I, I can see it. I don't know where you get the energy from, but I need some of that. Well, you know what? You know what's ironic is that um there are many times that right before I go live, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta do this for another hour. But as soon as it hits go, I'm just like, hey everybody, you know, and uh it's it's kind of funny, but I do enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And I uh seeing, you know, like you, you you're tuning in again. I appreciate you jumping on and seeing regular people, the regulars, uh it, they pump me up. I can't let them down. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, thank you for picking my question. And uh, we still have to work soon. I know we have some distance issues going on, but hopefully yes, but we're gonna make it happen. Yeah. But yeah, I thought I asked this question because um, a lot of like talent have to shoot things by themselves. So we have to mm. shoot um, our uh, digitals. I have to shoot a lot of commercial um, because I'm just getting into acting. I've 
I wouldn't say I've been forced to act. I've just had to do it, um, even though it wasn't like what I was going for initially. So I have to work to getting my editing, photography, lighting skills up. Um, and it's kicking my butt, I have to say. Like, it's been the main reason why I haven't submitted jobs. So if you could share some information about using an iPhone, what setting to use it. I know, you know, there's like different formats. There's 4K and there's, um, you know, you need like a really good stand and all that stuff. But there's just some basic things. Like if you, if you could give anything to, you know, people like us to help us kind of get ready. And then we really appreciate you more. <laughs> well, I appreciate that you uh, feel comfortable to come to me and ask these questions. This is honestly what I want to do full time is to teach, inspire people and mm -hmm. and, and uh, create an environment where they're less intimidated and more creative. Mm -hmm. uh, that sounds like a bumper sticker. Be less intimidated, more creative. Anyway, um, so great. You brought up a few things. OK, so let's start from the top. OK, first is you want to create content of your of you. Right mm -hmm. now, do you want to let's talk about photography wise. OK. If you're me, if you're if you're if you're well for photography or video, if you're using your iPhone, the key thing, honestly, is going to be great lighting. Okay. You cannot go cheap on that because your sensor size is very small so that your phone stays thin and mm -hmm. therefore it can only absorb so much light. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like electricity. You, you have a small surface space to conduct the electricity, a bigger will do you well you could do more with it right so uh your your sensor is very small but yet it has a it has to capture all this light that's why in low light or in your living room it looks really crappy but if you're out in the daytime walking around you're like wow I, it looks great it's sharp it looks colorful yeah well you have the sun right so um so that's the one thing you can take great photos what i um do you have the which iphone do you have I still have the 11, so this one right here. Okay, all right, so you have the 11. Okay, um, you have a few lenses. Do not do any pinch zoom, okay? okay. Use the correct lens, whichever one that is. Does the, the 11 has a uh, portrait mode? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay, so uh, I would experiment between using the lenses and portrait mode, meaning the zoom, one, what is it? One time zoom, two, one, two times zoom. Yeah. Do not ever use pinch because that's a digital zoom. It's not an optical zoom. Optical mm -hmm. zoom is using the lenses. Digital is you know, you're just pinching in and then you're just making those pixels bigger pixels. And that's why it comes out pixelated. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. OK. Obviously, you have a good tripod, I'm guessing. You have like a little basic tripod. Yeah. yeah OK. Yeah. OK. Mm -hmm. Yes. So a good LED light or two would be your best friend, honestly. Mm -hmm. So you, um, I'm not sure what your budget is, but can I? I'm going to show you something, okay? Sure. These two right here, okay. Two examples. These are two examples. Mm -hmm. That will produce tons of light, but yet they're the size of your phone. Mm -hmm. That means you can carry these with you. You can go somewhere, put them in your bag uh, when you travel. And then if you want to create a vlog, go live, etc. You're ready to go. When I go to when I go to Vegas in, in a couple weeks, I'm bringing mm -hmm. this one. OK, I bring in this one as my main light. And then I'm just having it right over my head above mm -hmm. eye level. And guess what? I think it costs, it's under a hundred bucks, but it pays for itself. It does different colors. It does everything, but it's the size of your, of your phone, but and it's bright as hell. Okay. Uh, let me see if I have juice in this thing. Yes, I do. And this, um, yeah, so it goes from zero all the way up to a hundred and it, it's freaking bright, man. It is killer. Okay. So you want to get an led light so that you're getting as much light into that camera. Mm -hmm. So that's your photo or video. Now, okay. when it comes to your settings, excuse me, when uh, I would say, I mean, people do ring lights, mm -hmm. but they're not that portable. 
Yeah. I'm recommending this because then you could be anywhere and produce good light, right? Look, it's the size of my hand, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's a size. Oh, oh, there we go. Size of my hand. Mm -hmm. But it's so bright and has different effects and colors and all sorts of crazy stuff. And what is this one called? Um, You can get just... This one's Pro Master. You know, there's so many brands. That's why I'm I'm like, oh, they're both Pro Master, but um, it's literally called a Chroma LED light. But I'll send you a link. How's that sound? I'll send okay. you a link or two of different models, and then you can see which one works best for your budget. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to video settings, what do you? What is your intention with the video? Yeah, so to um, so I teach dance, shameless plug, <laughs> uh, in Campo at Aerial Dance Studio. I teach Afrobeat and salsa, and I need to uh, record um, just like maybe choreo, um, some sort of dance video to showcase like what I've worked on, or um, audition. So like tapes to send to. Um, the casting director. So I've always had to shoot things. I think you can see on my Instagram on the other one, you yes. have to see some of my weird videos that I've been kind of, you know, struggle busing. Okay. Now, whether you, okay. So first understand when you're shooting 10, 1080 versus 4k, 4k is going to be about three to four times the size of file. Right. Yeah. And, uh, the, and the quality of the footage. Okay. I I always look at how I'm going to tend to use it, right? Am I going to post it on YouTube, etc.? When I do my YouTube videos, I do it in 4K and then I drop it into YouTube, okay? Cuz you have the option of watching in 4K. Yeah. Um when it comes to your settings, I recommend if you're going to slow things down naturally, shoot in 60p, right? Mm -hmm. If you want to create slow-mo and not degrade the value uh, the quality of your footage, shooting 60p okay mm -hmm. um obviously if you want to save space do the 1080 at 60p but in general for talking head like we're talking 24p is going to be good okay for broadcast i believe they do like 30p but 20 the the slower the shutters the slower the frame rate the more light allows uh it, it is allowed into the sensor okay mm -hmm. So your frame rate, you're going 24, right? So every second, 24 frames are recorded. So if you're recording at 60, that's a lot of frames in one second, thus not enough time for light to enter into the lens. That's why when you go to 60 or 120, it gets a little darker. And then more pixel is showed because, well, you need more light. So if you do, if you do slow-mo in your living room, it looks really crappy. <laughs> so... Um, the inverse happens. If you shoot at 24, more light can enter, cleaner looking footage. So if we're talking and you're doing a tutorial or you're doing a, um, uh, let's say you're going to do a, um, what is it? A, a monologue for an up, uh, a casting or something. Mm -hmm. I would shoot at, honestly, you'll be fine at 1080 at 24 frames a second. Okay. Mm -hmm. Usually 4K. Is also if I want to punch in, punch out in my editing, then yes, you want to shoot 4K. It'll give you some latitude, okay. But if you're if you're going to showcase this on Instagram or something like that, where mm -hmm. they already press everything, yeah. honestly, no one's going to know anything from 1080 to 4K. Quite honestly, okay. except the real photo video nerds. So if you yeah. want to save space, 1080, 24P, and then as I said. It doesn't matter what settings without good lighting. Okay. You're not going to win with a yeah. cell phone. Okay? okay. I would personally, um, let me go to my phone right here. Let me see if I could test this. Uh, I would personally shoot at two X. Okay. Which is more like a 50 millimeter lens. Mm -hmm. I'll shoot more at two X. If you're not, if, uh, because you don't have the cinematic mode on like the iPhone 13 and 14 has, where it gives you a nice video blurry background. Mm -hmm. So you want to shoot at a 2X, and that 2X is going to give you a softer background, not as blurry as the cinematic mode, but a softer background. Okay. And it won't be, unless things are distracting. Your set design matters. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing, um, if do you go live at all? You go live? 
Uh, I'm planning to go live next week with some models. Um, so I'm going to okay. try that on Instagram. Um, okay. So get your set design. How does your background look? All this matters. Good lighting, set design. I think you were there when I talked about these little lights. Did I talk about that? Were you Absolutely. were you live with us? Okay. Absolutely. Well, my okay. My friend Lewis was uh, on live, and he ended up picking up a few of these. And these are awesome, and they're only um, thirty bucks or something. It's so what cheap. What uh, I'll send you the link to these too. Okay. Because it's a Chinese company, I you know if I try to say the name, they'll come and they'll come and murder me. Yeah. Okay. okay. It's not like a major brand. Okay. No, that's how you save money. <laughs> you don't get the major brand. But you know what? I bought these myself because someone else, a uh, a music video producer, talked about them. Mm. So and he's pretty legit. So I went and bought these myself, and I was like, damn, these things are awesome. They're magnetic all over the place. So you can stick them. Look, you can stick them everywhere. You mm -hmm. get cool lighting. It does different colors. You know what I mean? And I love it. I have one right here. You know? Oh, so, yeah, they're really great. They're bright, and the batteries yeah. last a long time. And and yeah. the company's called Ulanzi. 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 Okay. I'll send you the link to that, too. Okay. But this, if you throw these in, a, see how my background's looking colorful? So you got to really worry about set design. People, yeah. people want that. They expect it. All right. Yeah. So that's what I recommend for you, especially yeah. if you're going to be the host. Is the is the gray wall okay? Like the back? Like I feel like I, my desk is like towards another wall. I feel like I have to move everything back to. Well, if you're using this space, you are here. First of all, your camera's pointed upwards versus like parallel. Mm -hmm. See how my camera's like oop right in my face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have it on a stand and it's pointing directly at me okay. and then it versus pointing upward. Mm -hmm. We don't want that. Okay. So pointing straight at you because we don't want to look at the ceiling. The ceiling's adding nothing to your video. Oh, okay. So you need to raise that camera up higher. Right now, are you using your laptop? Yeah, I'm using my laptop. So okay. I, I See, guess I if, I, if I pushed my table up. Ooh. Oh. Okay. That'll work. That'll, okay. that's, that's a start. Um, and eventually, um, once your budget, depending on what your budget is, you get yeah. a get a, get an actual camera to stream with, and that's why my mine mine looks super sharp with the yeah. background. Yeah. That's so oh, for okay. cameras, is it just is there like a specific cam? Does it have to be like the latest and greatest? Or like no, no, nice that's work? a great that's a great question. And okay. no, right now for your Instagram live, just do your Instagram thing. Turn on your video on your phone. Point it mm -hmm. at you, you know, you flip it around mm -hmm. and then look at that background and say, okay, that's what everyone can see. I need to dress that up, throw a light over here, do this lighting, 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 lighting. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right now you have your, your background looks pretty flat yeah. to say the least. And then there's random white thing, right? Well, that's the cat. She's sleeping. <laughs> ah, we'll toss the cat to the side. No, no, but no, but what? what I, but the reason why I say that is because our eyes instinctively go yeah. to the brightest thing in the frame. And the light. Okay, so I could just like push her away. Sorry. You need to, you need to push, toss, whatever you need. There you go. But you know, well, and plus it works against you because you have darker skin, and yeah. then our eyes naturally go to some random chair doing nothing for you. Okay. So, fr so everything in this frame, literally mm -hmm. just do this again when we're not live. And it's yeah. like, how do I dress that up? Because that's what everybody put a family yeah. photo the here. Lighting, yeah, I need to get more light. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge because uh, there's not like a lot of natural light. Maybe I shoot in the day and that makes it a little bit more. No, bitter. you don't need that. No, I'd rather shoot it now when it's dark. Are you kidding me? But um, you got to get creative lighting. These are super yeah. cheap and they're USB charged. And they last long time. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help you with that part, but lighting, lighting, lighting. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for sure you need it. Cause that background is, is, uh, not helping you out to say the least. Okay. <laughs> but it'll spice it up. It'll spice it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'll spice yeah. it up. So that's, so your cell phone is not the end of the world. Okay. You just need a good key light, a real light, or get a soft box. The soft box I use is a 36 inch. It's pretty big. That's what I use right now for live. 
But for now, you can just go this inexpensive route, something like this or a little bit bigger. Okay. Mm -hmm. so that when you travel, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. Um, I talked to you about the frame rate, right? I um, was about to say the frame rate, you have a stand for sure. And uh, get yourself a good microphone. I'll show you the cheapest way to do it. You want to see a good microphone? Do not use the microphone in the phone. Okay? Give me a second. Woo! All right. Got me active this evening. <laughs> you got me active. Let's go. I'm All so right. not that kind of person. I'm so like demure. Well, uh, well, well. Unfortunately, I am hopped up on caffeine. Okay, here we go. Shout out to Starbucks if you want to sponsor a brother um, for Black History Month. For right. The <laughs> I'll take that. Yeah. All right. Um, you know, hold on. That's right. So. Two options, folks. If you're going live and you want to use your 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 cell phone, this is a great question because everyone has a cell phone. That your I have an iPhone. It's a magnificent creative tool. I've gone on hikes and brought all my gear, and then I find out I'm taking all the photos with my damn cell phone. So, mm -hmm. and that's the reality of things. Okay, it's a magnificent tool. Just understand the limitations that technology isn't getting around right now, which is a that it's pretty bad at low light compared to bigger cameras. Right. But it's a fantastic tool and they're only getting better. But the audio still sucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is how to get around it. Here we go, folks. All right. I, let me see here. Um, this is what I'm talking about right here. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a simple lav mic that I bought. It's some... Look at this brand. It's called Pop Voice. Okay? Dude, I have no clue about this company, but it's only, I think it was 10 bucks, 13 bucks, 15 at the most. And it's a lav mic. And what that's going to do. That, is, like L A V or? I'm so sorry. How do you spell that? L A V? L A V, Lavalier. Lav mm. L A V A L I E R, I believe. And if yeah. I'm wrong, well, let me know down below. Okay? If I'm wrong. So um, right here. And then I, I use the adapter that plugs into the white lightning adapter, you know, on the bottom of your phone. I put that in there. But what this is going to do, Chi, is that it's going to it's going to isolate all your voice and not mm -hmm. all the other stuff and mm -hmm. the reflections off that wall and the ceiling. And you're going to sound way more professional and present in the sound. Yeah. And you're not going to hear cars passing because that cell phone is going to pick up everything, the kitty cat purring and everything. And all of a sudden, you're not going to sound as professional, right? So what about the AirPods? Do you think that helps or not? Um, yeah, that, that could definitely help. Absolutely. Something like that. Um, I haven't done a test. The reason why I'm saying that's why I'm the reason why I'm humming is because I haven't done a test as to how isolated your voice is compared to everything else. Because mm -hmm. I swear, if you're using AirPods, you're still going to pick up like stuff happening here. You know what I mean? While this is made to be very direct and like, mm -hmm. boom, right here. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now that's try your AirPods. Okay. This is only $13. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's not like you're breaking a bank. Now, if you feel like breaking a bank because you just hit, ran into grandma's money. OK, then this will be your winner, winner, chicken dinner right here. OK, now this is DJI's lavalier mic mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. OK, now you would connect this receiver into your iPhone. It has the adapter. It comes with the adapter right there. Mm -hmm. OK. And you just plug it in like so. It's very simple. Um, you plug this in to the bottom of your phone. Mm -hmm. Here, I'll I'll show you. Actually, shout out to DJI if you want to sponsor this. Um, boom! And now you can see the little. There's a meter here. Mm -hmm. 
and you could tell if your mic is being picked up. There it is. Boom, doing its dance, right? Now you take this mic, it's wireless, and you put it underneath your shirt. There's a magnet there. It'll stick right there. Mm -hmm. And then now you're talking into your phone. Hey, everybody. Whoa. And then it'll sound like a champ because you have an actual professional lavalier system uh, mic right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, but that this one cost over $300, though. Okay. That's a downside. But the quality is amazing. And if you do, uh, if you get a camera to do video and tutorials, you'll definitely want this later anyway. Okay. Um, but I gave you the cheaper route, which is this right here. Yeah. And I have both just in case. Right. Um, cause for 15 bucks, who cares? Just get it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so try, try your, try your, just, the, the most important thing is don't use the mic on this. So mm -hmm. if your if your AirPods work just fine, mazel mm -hmm. tov. Go ahead and do that. That's a win. Okay. Okay. So try that out. Um, record yourself and listen back to the audio. Yeah. If you're still picking up kitty cats doing its thing, clearly you need something that's more isolating. And this ten dollar thing, you let me know. I'll send you the link. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please send me all of them. Thank you okay. so much, Robert. I really appreciate this. Um, I'm gonna head out now. Okay. But yeah, I'm teaching dance <laughs> oh, at Aerial Dance Studios on Wednesday at 9 p.m. I'm teaching Afro Fusion, Afro Fusion and Salsa. So I kind of mix um, a lot of like Latin roots, basic salsa, you know, on one on two and with uh, mixed out with like Afro beat style. So like your Nigerian pop music, you know, your Love Wanton Tea, um, you know, your uh, Fireboy DML. Uh, I'm, I'm basically finding all the beats on there, all the, the pop, 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 pop. and then I'm, I'm doing salsa. I'm doing Afrobeat on, on that, on those uh, sounds. So, yeah. Well, that sounds Campbell, amazing. Yeah. Um, now, where can folks find you at? Uh, on Instagram right now. I'm just on Instagram at Live Your Chi. So, basically, my handle here is Live Your Chi. Um, and I, I mean, when I get there, maybe I'll start a YouTube. I feel like I have so much to talk about and I can't really figure out which one I want to, <laughs> I want to like, you know, dive into because I'm just everything. Passing about a lot. Yeah. I dance, I model, I do tech. I, yeah. It's a lot. So. Well, you know what? Um, right now is the time to be a content creator. And you better get in while, while you can. And uh, the, 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 the landscape is great. And with this crazy economy, it's best that you create an economy of your own. You understand what I'm saying? For sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. This is really great. Um, yeah. Big ups to you. You're great. Thank you. I'll be sharing your work and your events. And hopefully we have something to, you know, put together. Oh, we will. We will. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's the, what do you call it? The, uh, it's the little, the fine print. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, if the if we can book jobs, that'd be great. That way, we you know we all get paid and and that's that way, right. You know, it, the 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 journey is covered. You know, absolutely. Yeah. And there's some networking events coming up. I uh, yeah. I think you already know, but I'm going to go to a few of them. Uh, the mm -hmm. filmmaking ones. Uh, the who, who's doing it? Emily's uh, Emily's filmmaking networking events. So I'm going to head to a couple of them. So I'll share those with you if you don't know about it. Yeah, and, yeah, please. Uh, yeah, let's let's share opportunities, create opportunities, right? Course, and I course. really appreciate you coming on board. Thank you very much, everybody. Give Chi a hand and make sure you follow her on Instagram at Live Your Chi. Yes, thank you very much. Have a great evening, Robert. Bye. Take care now. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. All right. Well, there we go. See, that's what I'm talking about. I love having. Uh, uh, people supporting this community that are from other creative communities, right? That's what this is all about. Um, it looks like we have a comment or two. Uh, oh, Coogly says great hair. Yes, she has phenomenal hair. That is that's definitely cool stuff. <coughs> I wish I had, you know, some cool hair. Uh, actually, I'm not even, I, I purposely shaved bald, but uh, I have a full head of hair, but this is easy to maintain. Am I right? I think so, right? I mean, it's just it's just a win. Um, D Rock goes, Hey, what's up, Robin Chi? Hey, what's happening, man? Thank you. Thank you very much. D Rock, 
coming in with the what's up and a black hand wave. Look at that. And uh, Greg Corker. Hey, informative segment. Thank you very much, Greg. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why this week you folks are driving a conversation. It's our open Q&A. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns about photography, this is your time to share them because today I'm going to answer your questions. All right. So as we're waiting to get some questions here, I want to go over some photography news. You know what? I want to go over some photography news, right? Because, you know, a lot has happened this week. Let's go. All right. With that said, yes, I got that intro just for this segment, okay? Believe it or not, I searched for it. I was like, oh, this is going to be perfect for you. Um, Let's go ahead and share my screen. We got a lot of things, a lot of gear drop this week. Am I right? A lot of gear drop. That's a good thing. And can be a bad thing for your pockets. That's right. Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the first thing. First things first. Um, da, 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 da. Yep. Here we go. Cool. Go to StreamYard. And now let's. Okay. So Nikon drops two lenses as for us Nikon shooters out there. Um. They announced the 85 f1.2 S lens, which makes my heart melt. Um, it makes my wrist hurt just looking at it because it is huge. But it, I'm sure this is one fine piece of art right here. Okay. And also, they announced a great street photography lens, the Pancake 26 millimeter f2.8. They say it's the lightest, slimmest. Nick or Z lens or Z lens for those who call it that. Less than one inch thick feather light pancake prime, ideal for mirrorless cameras. I think this is gonna be ideal for a uh, portrait. Sure. I mean this thing looks amazing. Let me go ahead and, and switch to the specifics here. Um oops, present, go to share, and let's go to first. Let's check out the 85, shall we? Bam. Right. Look at this. All right. Here we go. So here's the 85 F 1.2 S lens from Nikon. Nikon, feel free to holler if you want to support my brother and sponsor this channel. But anyway, uh, they'll never see this video, but that's cool. Let the classic view and exotic aperture among photo and video pros. Yes, I bet this thing is going to be phenomenal. I'm going to. Just can't wait to get my hands on this. If my channel was bigger, hopefully they would have just sent me one. That would have been dope. But nonetheless, we're going to talk about it. It looks like a gorgeous lens. I personally own the Z50 f1.2 lens, and that thing is phenomenal, super sharp. Yes, it is a bit beefy, but, you know, I go for quality. Screw it. I'm going to, I don't care. I'm going to deal with it. Um, this one here. It's going to be an 85, which is going to be a classic portrait lens for um, beauty. Obviously, they're talking about weddings. Anything portraiture, really. This is going to be your coat, you know. Now, um, it says uh, 1.2. Here, there's focal lens. Obviously, they're showing all these beautiful shots, natural portrait, natural great portraits. Um, of course, background separation is going to be stellar on this lens. Let's be honest. Woo! The video of this. It's nice. I'm sure in the professional hands, it will be nice. Uh, look at the Boca balls. They're actually pretty spherical, which is pretty damn impressive. At f2.0, point light sources transfer into dreamlike orbs. Oh, at f2.0. Cool. Um, low light, obviously, it's going to kick butt there. Now, here's the downfall to this lens, folks. Look at this. Look at that. Yeah, control ring, which I always turn off because uh, my hand always hits it. So I turn that control ring off. And then uh, uh, this here, which I tend to like using, what I when I ever use the function button, I always tend to switch it to um, silent mode and um, mechanical. So that's just me personally, but that's what I tend to do with my Z lenses, okay? Now, here's the downfall to this lens. That's right. It's the price. 
I mean, this thing here is at $27.99. Yowzers. That's a serious. Oh, golly. You know, post a comment down below. What do you think about that price? That is, that's pretty hefty. I mean, I'm, I'm the type of guy that's, I will jump on the camera, right? The Z camera. I jumped on the pre-order, you know, I have the 1512, which was, I think, around 2200 bucks. Um, um, as well as the 70 to 200 is around that price, like 2000, you know, 2000 something. I'm like, okay, but when it's creeping to three grand with tax, wow. Cause I was really going to consider this lens. I have a lens I could sell. If it was around 2000, I would have sold it, maybe just made up the difference and just bought it. But man, at three grand, please, boy, I'm going to be waiting a little bit longer to get this lens because this is. That's an investment right there. That's that's a straight up camera. Uh, we have a comment. Oh, okay. We have a couple of comments during our news segment. How dare you? Okay, let's go like this. Um, Mark Tisdale over on Facebook says, "Was that other lens f one point two? Yes. Uh, well, if you're talking about the uh eighty five, yes, one point two, Mark. And he says, yes, one point two is gorgeous." Hundred percent, you cannot go wrong with it if you can afford it because they're not cheap. And as you notice, especially if you're shooting Nikon, they get big. I mean, they just get freaking big. It's beautiful elements, glass elements, and everything inside of it. You're gonna pay for it in weight and and, and price. That's a guarantee. Uh, Greg Corker comes in and see the lens in action. Link had a great video. You know what? Um, let's take a look. Okay. Let's, let's let's take a look at that, Greg. Uh, and yes, it is a beautiful lens. Here we go, beautiful lens. Gar yes, absolutely can't deny it. It's just the price, exactly. Sheesh, right, Mark? The price. Good lord, what are they? Three grand? Oh my goodness. Let me just calm down from all this coffee. Same price as Canon's eighty-five. Oh, one point two. Oh, is it really? Oh, that's interesting, Greg. Uh, Greg, I, I appreciate you sharing that little tidbit. Um, it's still a high price. Let's be honest, folks. Right? Three. Who has three grand for one lens? Like you'd have to be a pro of a pro of a pro, and you just got it like that. Because honestly, I knock out most of my shoots seventy two hundred twenty four to seventy and fifty, and I have one hundred five. Like I have, I, I'm good. Right? I'm good. This lens is literally just because I can and I want to. Right at that price, wow. Okay, um, Cooley comes in. What does Z9 cost? Z9 is 5500 bucks. Okay, as a flagship camera, it's the cheapest flagship camera against Sony and Canon's, and um, or at least Canon's current flagship, which they don't call a flagship. Um, but, but that I felt was worth it. Sure, that was definitely worth it. For me, I love the camera. There's so much features I'm still learning about it that I have to learn. The Z9 definitely was a solid win. Okay. And Greg Corker says, so true. It's expensive. Yes, it is. I mean, I was going to try to justify it at 2000 maybe 2200 I would try to justify it and like lie to myself and figure out why I need it. Uh, but at $2,799, at $2,800 with tax, you're looking at $3,100. Something like that. Now I'm pausing. <laughs> that's a straight up like good vacation right there for me. Okay, for a single brother like me, that's a serious vacation, buddy. Right. Um, Mark comes back. Thirty five is my baby. Yes, the thirty five is awesome. Oh yeah, I love it. Um, it's a great journalistic style. I like the point of. I like the perspective of a thirty five. I love using, matter of fact, that's what I'm using right now to go live. I have the Sigma R DGDN lens, uh, F1.4 lens uh, at F2.8. Uh, and that's what I'm streaming live with on my Lumix S5. So shout out to the 35 millimeter shooters out there. Oh, yeah. Um, and Cooley comes in. Got to make that money back. Oh, you dare, Marty. Okay. If I'm spending uh twenty eight hundred dollars before tax let me tell you i need to make that money and then some back that's why when i bought the uh, z9 
I've shot so many, I already knew what I was, what I needed it for. And it was only going to allow my workflow to be that much smoother. I needed something with better autofocus, terrific low light, fast for my runway shows or weddings when they're walking down the aisle. The Z9 answered everything and made my job easier. Boom. I sold the D850, got the Z9, no brainer. Now the 85 one, two is literally just because I want to get it. Um, would it be nice to have hundred percent? Do I think it's a gorgeous lens? hundred percent. Do I think I'd be absolutely in heaven if I owned one? hundred percent. The price is the only thing that makes me say, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, Greg Corker says, do you have the 50 F 1.2? Absolutely. Brother. I have it right. Oh. Give me a second. Jesus Christ. Sorry, folks. Doing too much. All right. So, Greg, here we go, right here. So, you know, I'm not just talking smack, okay? Let me just make sure this is looking pretty. In my face. Okay. Boom. 51.2 Z lens, right here. Gorgeous. I had to get it. When I, after I got the Z9, I started selling off all my DSLR uh, lenses, and um, this was on the top of my list. Fifty-one two, because if I'm going to choose one focal length or one lens to a photo shoot, it's going to be a fifty every time. Okay, a fifty. This lens, this thing feels so sexy. And when I shoot my video, when I do my short films, check it out at dayonefilms.net or uh, Day One Films on YouTube. Um, I shoot, pri I shoot uh, as much as I can on a 50. I don't know what it is. I just love 50 for, it's just, just such a great focal length and super versatile. I, I call it the, um, Swiss army knife of prime lenses as a 50. That's just me. That's my opinion. And, um, I love my 50 and here it is right here. It never stays home. Guaranteed. It's by my side. Okay. So that's my, that's my 50. All right. And as I said in other videos, if you have a, a, a wave your hand, let me know if you have a, uh, if you have a uh, Nikon Z system, because this lens right here, this lens right here, that's right. I said it, this lens right here is one of the most underrated Z lenses. Okay. It is. Oh, see, I need to get a drum roll uh, sound effect for you. It's this right here. It's the 105 F 2.8 macro lens. Okay. This lens is nice and light. That's right. It's actually light. Sharp as shit. Okay. Excuse me. It's heck. All right. What do we have on this? Um, of course, you have a focus stick distance here. You have a... Uh, Auto, manual, obviously, you have one function button here. You have your display control there. Um, but this lens is a monster. If you want headshots, 105 millimeter, perfect. If you want to blow up the background um, and great, great portraits, you could. Step back some. Um, but I use it for beauty photos where I want to get super close. Yeah, you're going to get detailed shots for days. If you're a wedding photographer and you have a Z camera, this needs to be in your bag for your lens, uh, like, see, lens, your ring shots, uh, detail shots. Yeah. The 105. And this thing is only like 900 bucks. Are you kidding me? Man, you gotta get that lens and knock it off and quit being cheap. So that's, that's one of my go-tos right there. Anyway, um, let's go back to, we got some more questions. Only hurts when you write the check hundred percent. Yeah. You get that 50, you get that 85. Uh, at that three grand, that's right. It's gonna hurt you real bad in the pockets now. That's right. Um, Mark Fisdell, uh, um, Junior comes in and says, "Love it, absolutely, hundred percent." You know I'm feeling that, and that's right. Lens has to pay for itself, and more to follow. Absolutely. Okay. Um, you have to, in terms of business wise, I look at my gear. 
choices, like when I'm going to buy something and say, okay, is it going to make my workflow easier? I need to go. Is it going to make my workflow easier? And is it doing something that my current gear is not? Right. So if you're going from kit lens to a professional lens, it's going to give you better low light. It's going to give you uh, sharper images, hopefully. It's going to give you a uh, better compression and, you know, separation of the background. So, yeah, okay, going from a kit lens to a 24 to 72.8 is going to increase and improve the quality of your images, right? Increase your workflow, et cetera. Um, so then, yes, then they, you could justify that, right? So that's what I go through that potential process before I purchase. That's why when I'm looking at this lens, I'm thinking to myself, yo, what is this lens really doing for me that my other lenses aren't? And right now, for that price, it's, it's, I can't justify it. That's the only thing, okay? I was going to buy this lens if it was around the 50 millimeter F 1.2 lens cost, you know, 2100 or something like that. Um, RBJ Photography comes in. <laughs> totally agree. I have the 100 millimeter macro RF lens for my R5. Gotta have it. You got damn right. Right, and that's what I'm talking about. If you're a Nikon Z shooter, get that lens. I'm telling you, it was like one of the best purchases I made, and it's so affordable. A gorgeous Z lens, f 2.8, right, under a thousand dollars, and that may, yeah, that, that that that's some money, but it's definitely in the big scope of things on the more affordable side. Okay, a definite win. Okay. Um, so thank you, RBJ. Thank you very much for that. Now, let's take a look at the other things they've gotten um, here. All right. Let's go back. Mirrorless lenses. Boom, bada, bang. All right. Uh, the pancake. Let's take a look at the pancake here. Here we go. Honestly, I'm thinking about getting this lens. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm, as, as some of you know, I'm going to WPPI, uh, next month. So I'll be in Vegas and I'm going to do more traveling, more blogging for you folks where I go. And honestly, this looks like a great straight photography lens. What do you, you get it? 26 millimeter. Perfect. Um, it's like wide, not too wide. Um, F 2.8. So I could get some separation if I wanted to, but ultimately, um, I'm going to be shooting more like a F4 a lot, you know, if I'm just walking around. It's $4.99. Dang, that's a really affordable price. I mean, I love how small it is. My only thing is that um, I only have a Z9 for a mirrorless body. So that's the only thing. That Z9 does not say street photography. I'll say that right now. It does not. But if I had a smaller version of a Z9, that would be awesome. That would be a win. Right, because uh, whoever held a Z9 before knows what I'm talking about. That thing is huge. But look at this. This is like your perfect street photography, walking around lens, and it's inconspicuous. It doesn't say rob me. I, I like how it looks with these. Um, what is that? The Z7 or whatever it is they got on on these. It does look pretty street. I, I'm, I'm definitely going to give it some some points. You know, that, that was definitely a, a cool win right there for uh, Nikon. So kudos for the 26 millimeter. And, and the price is right up anybody's alley. Okay. Um, uses a, step, a stepping motor for fast, accurate, smooth. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, of course, everything's great. But honestly, I think this is going to be a great, fun lens. Okay. And again, the price. Let's be honest. That's a great price. If you're doing, if you're just hiking on a hike and you just need one lens, this would be a great lens for that. And it's super lightweight. But yeah, come on, folks. That, that's a good one. So that's that's definitely a little win right there for Nikon. Kudos to Nikon for that. Oh, looks like we got some got some got some comments. I'm definitely loving the comments. Let's go ahead and see what folks are talking about. All right. Um RBJ Photography comes in and says, on the flip side, my Z62 has the 70 to 200 millimeter S lens and is a, is a beast for show. Um, love it. You're, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to give you this. You're absolutely right. 
the 70 to 200, I absolutely love, love it. It's actually smaller than the, the original one, which is quite a bit. Uh, but I love my 70 to 200. That never leaves my bag. It's right there staring at me and saying, why don't you play with me? And I'm saying, not right now. Okay. But I love my 70 to 200. The first two lenses I got in the Z was 24 to 70, 70 to 200 off top, right? If you only have two lenses, let's be honest, those are going to be the two, right? So that's definitely awesome, um, you know, with the Z6 II. And, you know, I sold my Z6, and I'm a little upset because I need a smaller form factor camera just to walk around the streets. It's a little rough out here for us photographers, as you know, you get robbed, etc. So I kind of miss my Z6. My Z6. I shouldn't have sold. I don't need auto fact of fast autofocus for a street camera or stuff like that. It was a great camera, a great quality. I mean, I have zero issues with it. Um, and so I miss that camera, right? So I don't want to go down memory lane, but I guess I'm gonna have to. Oh, uh, yes, the times when I had my Z6, ah, such a great camera, fitting all my shoulder bags, it didn't hurt my neck, um, or my back or my knees, or my wrist. It was a great camera, but I sold the thing, and I should have. That was a big L for me, okay? Um, Greg Corker comes in. The Z-Lens line has really filled out. Yes, they still have some work to do, but definitely, I, I, I actually like the fact that Nikon is going hard with f 1.2s. They're going straight to the juggler. They did f one eight. And now they're going straight to the one twos, and I appreciate that. So that's a good win for Nikon. Oh, yeah. Um, and and I like that they, they first took care of the one point eight, you know, most affordably of and acceptable for most people with, with uh flexible budgets. Uh, so they covered the 50s and the 85s, the 35, the 24. I think that was a smart move. That was definitely a smart move on them. And now they're going for us pros. So they got the, they got the 50, they got the 85. They're, uh, they're probably the next one's going to be a 105, 14 to cover their previous amazing 105, 14. But who knows? But either way, thumbs up. I just need a smaller version of the Z9. So I kind of, if you're listening to me, you hear this random video, okay? Z9, smaller form factor. That's all we need, right? That's all I'm praying for. Um, I got my money ready. Andre comes in. Hey, Robert, just purchased a Sony S7R2 and got a Sam Young 35mm f1.4 and a Rokinon 85mm f1.4. Way, way cheaper lenses, 150%, because he's saving that coins. That's right. That's what he's doing. That's a smart move right there. Have to adjust for my budget at the moment. Now we'll invest on learning. Oh, yeah. That's where the money should be, folks. Invest time on not only just um, learning, but let's say if you have a, 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 a trade shoot with a subject, get a good location. Maybe pay for a nice little hotel room just for one night so you could shoot in there during the day or Airbnb a spot or peer space. So yes, put your money into your the marketing of your work and that not only um, uh, the learning part, but the marketing part. Okay, everything else will come. Better gear will come. All this gear we're talking about, uh, $3,000 freaking 85 millimeter, it's not going anywhere. Slow down. In your photography, and then everything else will come. I didn't. This is the first time I was able to afford uh, a, 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 a flagship Nikon camera. I started out with D thirty. I want to say thirty one hundred. Okay, with two lens kit from Best Buy, and so. But of course, I always wanted a flagship. I've never been able to afford one until now, and that's when I got the Z nine last year. And that was my first time having a flagship, but I've had like the 800, the 810, and the D850, but not the flagship. And uh, so all in due time, brother, I think what you did was phenomenal. Okay, Andre, you did the you did the uh, Sony A7R2, and then you got two great lenses, a 35, get your environmental shots and a uh, little bit wider shots. And then also you have the 85 for great portrait. You're going to be just, Fine. Everything else will come. Learn the fundamentals. Learn the basics. Get really good at that. Composition is what? King. 
Okay, don't forget that. And you'll be all right. Congrats, congratulations, Andre, on the purchase. Okay, great move. Keep me posted. All right, keep me posted. Uh, and if you have any questions, comments, or you know, you can hit me up. Okay, and Andre, I believe you're a, a Patreon. If you're a Patreon, I believe you are. Okay, that gives you another coin and a solid Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the support. Ah, oh. now let's get back into it. Um, with the news, I didn't know the news was going to be such a great talking point. That's what Nikon. All right. Now let's look at this other stuff. Okay, for all my um other shooters out there, let's move that, that, and because I want to respect the other shooters. Okay, boom. Here we go. We got Cannon in the house. Okay. What's up, Cannon shooters? Okay. Um, so Cannon comes out this week. This week has been crazy with gear. Let's be honest. I mean, like, I don't know. This is like an economic time. I don't know how much money they think folks got. Uh, EOS R, uh, R8. Step up. Full frame combined time performance, full frame capabilities, light weight, compact at $1,500, 24 megapixel, ample features for video creators, vertical movie mode. See, what did I tell you, folks? Vertical videos is where it's at. To the, you know, how in, you know the future is coming when these uh, brands are starting to market not only for vlogging, that was the thing for like the past two years. They always had a vlogging camera. Now they're literally talking about vertical movie mode panasonic with the open gate to shoot vertical videos and now you have here with canon vertical if that's a feature that they're literally highlighting trust and believe you need to get into video folks okay uh vertical movie mode and aspect markers uh panasonic has been doing that for a while um i think i want to say c9 does markers because it can shoot up the AK frames but either way that's a new thing, guaranteed everybody's gonna follow. Uh, and then we have the EOS R50 coming in. Okay, so we have full frame and then we have a crop sensor camera. So these are like entry entry level right here. Okay, giving you 24 megapixel, more than enough juice than you need in terms of picture resolution. And you can see pictures just, it, it, it happens to take great photos. All these pictures are gonna take great photos, let's be honest. But um, it's really about the video features that they're now coming with. So even on this entry level one for six seventy nine, dang, you know, this is like a rebel straight up. This is like rebel, rebel price, the T rebel, right, folks? Six seventy nine, and it has dual pixel autofocus. I can be honestly, if you're just starting out and you just need a quick little camera with some decent video features, yo, this is the, you're you're not in a bad you're not in bad shape here. So many people did so much damage with the with the um, with the T Rebel and started there their video production career. This is definitely going to put you in the pocket for college students, right? Um, just graduated or for your teenagers. Six seventy nine. You're not breaking the bank. This is good. this is a smart move right here. Uh, this is literally going to replace the DSLR T Rebel line right here. Six seventy nine. That means when a deal comes, when Christmas comes, yo, when Christmas comes, this is going to be easily five hundred bucks, something like that. And um, so, kudos to Canon. That was a great move right there. Great move, Canon, right there. Okay, making something that's entry level gets them into uh, uh, into mirrorless system and DSLRs. This is it. Everybody's been hunting for beginner cameras, mirrorless cameras under a thousand dollars and now you have it with the eos r50 that's pretty smart and then look at here i mean man this this week is nuts and then we have the rf 50 uh, s 55 the 210 millimeter now that's gonna be great for travel right there all right the aperture well sucks uh five to seven point one houses um it says Superb choice for photographers and videographers. You better have great light. This needs to be in the daytime 
or you're filming on set with tons of light. It's valuable. Wow. But you can't beat the price, though. Okay? Can't beat the price. The price is looking kind of righteous. 350 bucks. Okay? Uh, then we have the RF 24 to 50, 4.5 to 6.3. Okay? That's, 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 that's pretty solid. That's pretty cool. That's a nice little wide range at an affordable rate. Again, $299. Okay, I'm noticing a trend here. Noticing a trend here with these new lenses and these camera bodies. All right. Here. So it looks like Canon is doing the opposite. Canon is now digging into the entry level, right? They came out hard with some of their pro stuff. And they're doing the opposite of, of Nikon now. Now they're hitting all the affordable, you know, $350 lens, $200 lens. When I see this, and then I see that other manufacturers make mirrorless lenses way too expensive, it sometimes baffles me. So there is the capacity to make affordable lenses. So that's why um, I appreciate Nikon hitting F1.8 primes at affordable rates under $1,000, $600, $500. 1st and then here we have Canon with the S50, I mean, the EOS R50 and whatnot. Very affordable camera bodies and affordable light lines means people get transitioned into mirrorless, very smart for an affordable price without breaking a bank. And for new creators that are coming up that are, you know, 16, 17, 18, and you want to buy them a gift, you're not breaking the bank. And then you're getting them something that they can grow with. Because DSLR, even though, still good in terms of you know if you have it it's going to work but the future and the r d that these companies are investing in is in mirrorless facts okay um we have a couple of questions or at least statements mark says the d500 has been life for me absolutely i tend to stick with the nikkor stuff yes absolutely i love with with my nikon i have to shoot um native right so in this case, even going from the older mount to the new mount, I tried to use the adapter, but I noticed there were some communication issues. The Z9 helped and the new adapter helped a little bit, but it was enough for me to be like, you know what, I'm selling all of it and going right, like as native as possible, right? Because that autofocus can be the win, can be the shot, right? The kiss at the wedding, the ring, put it on the ring, et cetera. Like certain moments you can't just redo. I got to have reliable autofocus and going native every time. So if you're going to go Z, go all the way. That's just my personal opinion. You know, you do you. But yes, the D500 is one of the best uh, APS-C cameras ever made. Oh, yeah. Still bar none, 10 frames a second. That thing's a monster. Built like a tank. I loved it. I sold it for the Z6. Definitely one of the cameras I wish I didn't sell, sell, uh, sold so quick. I had so much fun with that camera. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, Mark says, I'd love to go mirrorless, but I feel like it's such a huge jump from where I'm at. You know what? Honestly, you know best what works for you. But I did, but I will share this. Once you're in, go in, right? When you're ready to transition, transition all the way. Because again, the performance, um, you're getting newer te focus and technology built into these newer lenses, all the R and D and the firmware updates, they're all going to the mirrorless. <clears throat> so therefore in long-term investment, you know, mirrorless is where it's at. That's the unfortunate truth. But if you uh, so, if you're not ready yet, you're fine. The lenses are lenses; they're good if they're good, right? They last the test of time. Um, that's why the resale value tends to stay up with the lenses versus the bodies. But when you're ready, Mark, go all the way. That's what I recommend. Go all the way. Boom, just go all the way. Okay, but no rush. Do you? Okay. Uh, Cooley says, "Does the D850 have 4K?" Uh, I believe it does. Gosh, I haven't had a camera in a couple of years. Um, I believe it does, but I'll tell you one thing: I wouldn't use it, okay? Because the autofocus isn't there, the live view. Yeah, it's just even though they tried to improve it, then it's just not there. Now the Z9, oh, that thing's money. It shocked me. 
And you know what shocked me about the Xenon video? The uh, vibration reduction, the uh, sensor stabilization is really good. And that camera does 8K 60 frames a second. It just does so much more. And um, I want to say it does a at least it does 1080p at 120 but the z9 has impressed me with the video i gotta experiment more with it because i rely more on lumix than panasonic for my video i just love the ease of it and the color quality i just love lumix. so that's just me okay um pi comes in hey pi how's it going <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. And he says, hey, Robert. Hey, how are you doing? Thank you very much. Thanks for letting me know you're tuning in. Um, RBJ Photography says the D850 was the best DSLR camera ever made. Hands down. I'll have to give that a Randy Savage. Oh, yeah. Me. And uh, he says, period. Ooh, shoot. That's right, brother. I hate selling that camera. You know what? Um, I love that camera, honestly. I was at, um, I worked. I, uh, just a little disclaimer, okay, ah, memory lane. I actually am a Panasonic Lumix advocate, okay? So I visit camera stores on behalf of Panasonic. I got a Panasonic jacket on right now because I work for them today. I love my Panasonic gear. I've, I've bought in tons of Panasonic. That's why I'm shooting with it right now as I stream. Gear I bought. And... um and with that said, I was at Mike's camera over in Mill Valley, California, and I picked up the D850 today, and I was like, man, this camera was awesome. You know, it's a beast, and it's built like a tank. It's so reliable. It never beat it on me. Never, man, that thing, honestly, the D850, hands down, is the best DSLR camera ever made. Oh, yeah. And that's a fact, okay? So I, I second that our Absolutely. But the only reason why I gave it up, like I said, was to put that money toward the Z9, which was a win. But uh, remember what I said, what I, I tried to do like hybrid, get the Z9, use my old lenses with it. But the, you know what? The autofocus, you just have to go all in. So when you're ready, RBJ, go all the way. Go hard in the paint and you'll win too. Okay. But for now, if you have the DM, everything works for you brother hey man keep shooting that's the most important part and if the system works for you then it works okay clients pay you for what this whole they don't pay you for your camera okay uh mark comes back i believe the da50 is full is ak full frame yes but i um uh, i'm not i think it's a 30 minute record limit and some other stuff but a lot of cameras matter of fact if you get the if you're looking to do video i'm not gonna lie um, you know, you have Canon, you have, you have Sony, you have Panasonic and the best video, my personal choice. Okay. Just cause I know I work for the company. So yes, I'm a little biased. Okay. Um, it says Lumix cause you can shoot 4k 60 frames, 4k 120, um, 5.7 K up to 60 frames, unlimited record time, zero issues, GH6 baby. Okay, so G H six is reign supreme, but yes, T F fifty I believe does four K. But I would never rely uh, unless you're doing talking head. If you're doing talking head, like uh, in the uh, interview style testimonial videos, you'll be fine with the T F fifty. Set it up, manual focus, lock it in, press record, you'll be fine. But for everyday purpose as a video production camera, hail to the no. I'm not going to do it, okay? Z9, though, now you win it. But it's a big beast, okay? But small rig makes a great cage for you to build a camera rig around the Z9 so you can win there, okay? You just can't beat the auto. It's, a, it's on another stratosphere in terms of workflow. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to say a more efficient workflow using the Z9 versus the 850. I never look back. I never looked back. When I spent it and I got the Z9, I was just like, okay, that was a big hit, right? It's 5,500 bucks. But I'm like, damn, this is like a lot. So, you know, there you go. Um, Pi comes back and says, I'm still learning, Robert. I have a Canon mirrorless M550. Awesome. That's a dope little camera. And also playing with a classic K50 
Canon 5D Mark II. And honestly, love the full frame look more than I do mirrorless. Um, well, once you combine the two, brother, once you combine the two, full frame and mirrorless, and we just talked about it. Look, look right here. Okay. We just talked about it. Here we go. If you want full frame and mirrorless, look, the R8 is giving you that at $1,500 and get you in the game. All right. And they have other options, but this is something that's a little bit more affordable and get you in the game. Unfortunately, with the M50, they're not investing. The R&D is not there. It's all here. So you could only go so far with lens selection and everything else um, with the M50. But it's a great camera. Nothing wrong with it. But I'm just saying in the long run, you want to consider these other particular options. And if you're used to the Canon system, here you are. EOS R8 is going to get you in the door full frame at $1,500. Okay, so maybe, you know, Christmas time, treat yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's what I do. I always buy my, hey, during Christmas, I always buy, you know what, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, during Christmas, I always buy myself a gift. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I buy myself a gift. Okay, so therefore, if I can stock a book or whatever, I'm not even tripping. I already got myself the toy I really wanted, okay? Because no one's going to get you what you really want except yourself. All right? You know, that's right. Um, so think about that, uh, Pi, in the future, and then come holler at me when you talk about full-frame uh, DSLR over mirrorless. Because I'm telling you, once you have the pre live preview through your, uh, uh, through your, um, oh, I'm having a brain fart. You know, when you're able to, have live preview on the back of the screen and know exactly how your images pretty much can come out, as well as the electronic viewfinder. Man, that, that right there alone makes it worth going to mirrorless. And then when you go uh, with the uh, five inch axis stabilization, man, you better knock it off. Full frame mirrorless is where it's at if you can do it. And that's why I'm giving you a realistic approach to saying, hey, you know what? Plan on this camera here we're talking about. This is not a bad choice. You need to experiment with full frame and you're still in the Canon system. You already know how the menus work at an affordable price. And then you find out for yourself. Well, that's just my opinion. Uh, RBJ says DA50 to Z9 was a definite win. Yeah, absolutely right. Oh, yeah. Okay. That deserved it, Randy. I just I'm doing too much, folks. I got my lens okay, and, uh, caps popping off and everything. Um, yes, absolutely was a major win. 100%. I agree, too. Um, Mark comes in. He says, much agreed. Thank you very much. I appreciate it, man. I really do. And Pi says, although the tech is limited on the 5D Mark II, I feel as though it lets me learn the craft as it as the spaces. Absolutely. Okay. It makes me earn the shot instead of camera doing all the work for me. Yes. Hunt, I couldn't agree more. I think you're absolutely right. Again, the 5D Mark II, three, you're going to be, you're going to create, it's not the camera's fault. <laughs> you know, it's a great camera. Okay. It was great then. It still cr creates great photos for you. It's only up to you to mess it up. Right. So 100%. Everything you, that's a great mindset you have. Practice the basics. And what do I say about composition? Composition is what? King. Don't forget that. So get all these fundamentals right. Creative. And what do I say at the end of all my shows? Keep shooting. Stay creative. That's the most important part. Pick up the camera. Find a reason to pick up the camera and um, in, 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 in practice. Um, and then after you do all that, practice your post-production, folks. Okay? Learn the ins and outs of Lightroom. Okay. Um, and some Photoshop, but definitely Lightroom. No excuses, folks. So, yes, absolutely. Great mindset, Pi. And he says, thanks for the info on the EOS R8. Yes, go ahead, check that camera out. I think that would be a great gift to yourself. And I will put money on this, folks. I will put money. Let me see if I have something here. I, okay, I don't have anything. Uh, here we go. I will put money on this. Christmas time, 
that EOS R8 is going to be on sale. Okay? Guaranteed. Christmas time, they're going to drop that price like a damn rock in a pot. All right? So just keep that eye open. They'll probably, you know, maybe 300 bucks off, something like that. And by then, you go, okay, you know what? Let me, let me just check this out. Uh, Greg comes back. Or you could, you could rob Peter to pay Paul and buy a R6 Mark II. Well, all right, buddy. Uh, you could do that. Absolutely. But me, I like to, you know, if I don't have to, do cash. You know what I'm saying? Because I hate spending credit. Okay. Um, that's just me. I like to leave credit for like a nice trip or something like that and earn some points. But, uh, but yes, absolutely. You know, I've done some fandangling, folks. Let me tell you, I've done some fandangling. The fandang I would trade a lens in, and then, then you know, I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do this. You're, you know, you're talking to the double, a double Dutch king when it comes to fandangling to get my, to level up on lenses around here. Um, but I don't have any cats, dogs. I don't have a girlfriend. I have none of that. So you know, all the money comes to me. You understand what I'm saying? So uh, I don't mind spending it on another lens. I won't get in trouble with myself. So, but absolutely, Greg. Um, and then we have Cooley coming back. Am I the only one who uses a, stro a strobe frame to keep flash above the camera? A strobo frame to keep flash above the camera. Now, are you talking about mounting it? Like, uh, Cooley, are you saying, do you, do it, does it mount here? Does it mount right on top there on the hot shoe? Because um, I do, I used to shoot with my flash mounted to the hot shoe for candid shots for like a reception, during the reception of the wedding and stuff like that. And then I put a mag, mag mod sphere up top. That was a great combination for great lighting. Um, but overall, I'm in the studio a lot, as you may know. So I just have a trigger on there to flash off camera strobes and stuff like that. So just let me know what, what, what uh, uses a strobo frame to keep the flash above. Let me look that up, actually. Strobo, strobo frame. Oh. Strobo frame quick. Oh. Um, you could do that. If that works for you, Mazel Tov, but uh, I do not. I used to have these kind of brackets. Now, I, now they're just sitting in my bed, looking at me more than I'm looking at it. So, for those that don't know, let me show you what what he's talking about. Um, the Strobo. Here we go. Okay, can you see? Yep, yep, yep. There you go. So those are Strobo frames here, and. Uh, you know, stuff like this. Um, I tend not to because it's only going to add more weight. But I've seen plenty of people do it. You know, I move a lot when I'm at my events. And when I'm shooting events or wedding photography, so I don't need more attachments. You know, I, I run and gun. Like, I'm literally going to show up in some Chuck Taylors, and I'm running and gun, and I am not waiting. So totally up to you. Nothing wrong with it. If it helps you, it helps you. And be damned what anybody else says. So there you go. That's my, that's my ruling on that. Okay? Um, Cooley, Cooley comes back and says, you use it for doing vertical or horizontal. Yes, I can totally see that. Um, biggest thing is getting it off the camera. You know, I, I that's what I tend to like. Especially if, the, if your client is, is uh, has glasses. You want to sh make sure the light source is like above eye level for sure. So if you're shooting direct, you're going to get all those reflections and so forth. But nonetheless, if it works for you, it works for you. And I honestly, there is no wrong or right answer. Okay. It's up to your shooting style. Um, experiment. Experiment trying to get the same shots without it and see what you think. But for me, like if I were to use it, it would have been during a reception or a wedding. And, and 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 I tend to not like having extra gear. I used to, I do have it. It's, it's right over in the bin I have over there, but I don't use it anymore. I haven't used it in a long time. Okay. So I hope that helps. Dave Krause comes in with a 
question. And I really appreciate it, okay? Thank you. My basic edits are good when it comes to balancing an image, but I get stuck when trying to come up with a creative look. Okay. Uh, my basic edits are good when it comes to balancing an image, but I get stuck when trying to come up with a creative look. Now, creative look, if I'm trying to come up with a creative, this is a great question. I really appreciate that. I had to read it twice. Uh, let me take off this one here because we're not talking about things at the moment. Um, it starts with the lighting. Okay. Before I ever get to how I'm going to edit it, it starts with how I'm going to light it. Right. So I recommend experimenting with different lighting patterns, not just setups, but like pattern. Um, so if you do you use, if you have a soft box, right? If you have a soft box, okay. If you have a soft box, try shooting with a grid versus without a grid, okay? Or take out your uh, diffusion panels. That will create more speculative high, um, um, uh, lighting on the highlights of your subject or at a grid, which would try to take away light, still light, your more direct lighting. And that way add more dramatic effect to the overall lighting. Experiment with, um, um, experiment with your lighting, I think is the first step before you get creative in the post-production. You only can work with what you have. So if you have to over Photoshop, uh, the lighting and manipulate it in post production. It means you didn't do it in the first place. So that, uh, it went, went before you press your shutter, right? You take bigger. So that's why I recommend highly starting from scratch, mastering one particular light and how many different kinds of emotions or feelings you can get from that one light source. A lot of times, like if you buy Fotex um, or Godox, Godox too. The uh, soft boxes, they come with different, they come with grids and they come with an inner diffusion panel and then the, then the main diffusion panel and then a grid, an egg crate grid. Experiment with all of them, shooting with all of them, shooting with none of them, shooting with some of them, and then see how the pattern is. And then I would recommend one look, researching one light setups is one light. Um, um, let's say if you're shooting Rembrandt, isn't for every kind of photo. If you're shooting butterfly, that's not for every situation. And there's a reason why there's multiple uh, different lighting techniques to evoke certain emotion or to complement your subject in a particular way. So if you're looking for ways to get more creative, I would recommend doing so before you even take that photo. Here go, lighting. Lighting. And then, if you can, depending on the situation, set design. Okay, um, and then you're then you realize you won't need to edit nearly as much. So that basic edits you're doing that you say are good and you're happy with will more than likely be enhanced just because of your pre-production, right? So that's why when folks come to portrait photography workshops that I host, I say take off your photography hat. Because everybody's a photographer nowadays. The bar is very low, folks. A pregnant aunt can become a photographer. That's how low the standards are. But if you come into your shoots as a director, then you're going to be better off setting the tone um, that not only are you in command of your own shoot, but to your potential clients and to your viewers of your content, you were in full control of everything in the frame. So that's why I said set design. That's why I said lighting to evoke particular emotions. And that comes for also for the post production. So post, you, so, so you're in command of. So you got to really start your creative look um, in pre production, right? The planning, set design, uh, lighting, and then during the production itself, the shooting of it, right? Angles, poses, etc. And then in pre post production, in your editing, and you realize if you actually are conscious of uh, each step, right, of your creative look that you want. And you realize you'll do a lot less post-production in the long run because you already did it and got it right in the camera, okay? Your editing should enhance your vision. It should not be where you do all the heavy lifting. That means you didn't do the pre-production and the production. 
uh, process, you skip those two, right? You just took the picture and said, I'll fix it later. And that's not the way to go. So I recommend practice more lighting and composition because composition is what? King. Every time. Okay, so Daniel, I hope that helps. If you have any questions, even more specifically, because I feel like this is a little general, but aside of that, creative, you can't beat lighting, you can't beat composition. I don't care what camera you have, I don't care how long you've been shooting. Lighting, composition, king. That will rule. Composition is king, and the queen is good, sexy lighting. Okay, so I hope that helps. If you have any more comment, uh, qu uh, specific questions, you could always send me a quick email at info at Robert Silver Photography. Com. Okay, folks. Uh, real quick, I do want to say, um, make sure you press that like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Okay, help a brother out. Okay, I'm always running an HBO special. Now, someone said that on another podcast. I love it. Um, and it's true. Help, help me out. It's three ninety nine. Last time I checked. Press that like, press that share, and subscribe to my channel. And if you want, smash that bell icon, get notifications of upcoming videos. Because every Thursday is another uh, episode of Let's Talk Photography. All right? So please go ahead and do that. And um, the other thing is, if you like regular educational content, subscribe to me on Patreon at patreon.com slash Robert's Photography. So if you like what I'm doing, if you want to support the movement, which is the educational photography movement. Well, the best way to do it is uh, help me out on Patreon because then it allows me to dedicate more time to create educational content to inspire and educate you all in, uh, in photography. All right. Um, boop, boop, boop. Now let's go back, let's go back to the game. I think we have, hold on, saw a comment. Oh, here we go. Pi says, hi, Robert, struggled with some indoor lighting. White balance in those studios in in those situations. Do you use custom white balance? Uh, I can use custom white balance Kelvin passport color checker, etc. Hundred percent. Oh, here it is. Here it is, folks. Give me one second, please. All right. Like I said, I'm going to practice what I preach here, okay? I don't claim to be the best photographer. I, I, I can definitely say I'm a hardworking one. I definitely have a lot to learn. But the point of my channel is to share what I'm learning and what I have learned over the 11 years. And hopefully that inspires and helps you out in any particular way. So, hi, right here, baby, right here. Check this out, man. I have the color passport right here in my camera bag. Now, whether I'm shooting video with my Lumix camera or shooting photography with my Nikon, boom, right here. It's worth its weight in gold, right? The color checker passport. There's your 18% gray. And then if I want accurate color, especially when I'm shooting video, boom, right there. So, like I said, I practice what I preach. Um, these, I think, are like 100 bucks whatever it is, but I spent the money. I've been happy ever since. So yes, this is what I do. If you're shooting, if you're shooting, for heaven's sake, I need to get a boom arm because this band is killing me right here. So um, anyway, um, if you're shooting video, what I like about Lumix, they have the auto white. You could do a cut balance. You shoot this, right? And it automatically corrects the video footage, right? You just put it right in front of the lens like that. And with Panasonic cameras, boom, you press it, you have the custom white balance, you save to a preset, and then you always have that room. Um, so for you, Pi, if, if worst comes to worst, so the easiest way, if you're shooting photography in, what'd you say, in um, indoor lighting, in that room, you take one photo of the card in that room, and then when you're in Lightroom, you take the white balance drop tool, click that, right? So I use it as my first photo, if you will. I click that right there for 18% gray, and that will get you 
you know, 95% of the way that you want. You know, it may not be exact perfect, but it'll get you very close. All right. So that's one quick way to do it. So, yes, color checker is in the full effect. Daniel, Daniel says, thank you. I would definitely take your advice and apply it. Oh, awesome. That's an awesome win. Thank you very much. I'm glad it helped um, because, honestly, those are some of the most effective ways to improve your photography that cost you zero dollars, right? Practice and composition. Okay, there are rules for a reason, all right? And then break them. Once you understand them, then break them. And then lighting, lighting, lighting. If you want to get into good video work, start to do video production, or later on doing cinematic work, film, like making short films, et cetera. Lighting, lighting, lighting. That is what helped me transition and get more into video is because I've spent a lot of time with lighting in photography, which naturally made it easier when I went to videography and filmmaking okay you can check out my stuff at um day one films.net you can see the i've done um nine short films and one feature documentary and what's allowed me to be less intimidated by the filmmaking process is because i practice two things composition lighting 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 it's kind of remember that uh, dave Chappelle show yeah dylan 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 Good. Lighting, lighting, lighting. Okay. All right, Daniel. So, and keep in touch. If we keep in touch, follow me on Instagram. You can DM me anytime. Let me know how your progress grows. Okay. So, I appreciate you being a part of the community. That's a solid one for you, man. Uh, Pi comes back. Nice. Thanks for that info. Exactly what I needed. Is that the X Right brand? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. So it says right here on the back. I don't know if you can see it. It's X right. This is the that's that's the thing. I I had a um I have a white balance video on my YouTube channel. It's an old one, and I got a very cheap one. It was like eight bucks, and it did the job. But then I you know put on my big boy pants, and I got the good one. You know you just gotta you know sometimes you can't you gotta pay you got you gotta pay to play. You know, and that's when I got the X right color checker. It comes with the software and all that jazz. And um, this is what I have here. Like I said, boom. And then also here too. Oh my goodness, I think I'm messing this thing up by opening and closing it. And then there's your 18% gray right there. Okay. And you want to keep this shut because believe it or not, the sun rays, etc. you're supposed to replace this like every, I don't know, two years or something because the gray may fade or what. It's not quite 18% gray. Um, that's up to you. But the point is, keep it closed when you're not using it. You don't want the sun to, to mess with it because then your technical 18% gray is no longer 18% gray. So there you go. That's what I have. And uh, I hope that helps you out. All right. And I always keep it in my camera bag, whether I'm shooting natural light uh, in the studio or um, in, in, in um, uh, what is it, indoors or without a flash. I always keep it with me because that has saved me many times. All right. So, Pi, I hope that helps you out. Let me know if you have any questions after that. All right. Woo! Thank you, everybody. This, this is great stuff. I was I was really questioning. Folks had questions. I was hoping uh, I didn't want to have to talk to myself this whole time. Uh, real quick, um, I do want to. I think I think there was some other. Gear. Oh my goodness. Let's go back. What was I thinking? There's something awesome, okay? What was I thinking? We have one more news announcement. Yes, another lens that dropped. What was I thinking? Oh, my God. I feel, I feel so bad. Okay. Many of you, this might help a lot of you out. Um, Where is it? Here we go. Bam. All right. The Sigma 51.4 lens. This gorgeous beauty, I've been waiting for. Now, what you know, I shoot a Lumix, uh, Panasonic Lumix cameras, full frame S1H. I have S5, and um, I have so many Sigma DGD and art lenses. I think I have about five of them. And guess what? I do. the one lens that's probably the most, most used, most popular. Focal Prime, 
um, the 50 is like the last one they came, uh, came out with. They have the 20, they have the 24, they had the, what is it, 16 maybe? But they have the 20, 24 for sure, the 35, 85, and here they go, finally, the 50 millimeter F1.4 DGDN legs. <laughs> This lens right here for only eight fifty. Ay, ay, ay. I, oh my God, I'm so happy that they came out with this lens because again, as I said, if I'm going to choose one lens, it will be fifty. And boy, oh boy, you know Sigma. They don't they don't slack when it comes to their art lenses. Their art lenses are like they look like a piece of art, uh, literally. Uh, well made, um, very quiet, smooth as hell focus. Um, I love. Or DGT for eight fifty, folks. You have a f one point four lens. Oh my god! It makes me say I have to do a Randy Savage on this one. Oh yeah. Um that that is that is awesome. I mean, I can I hope I'm not the only one excited about this dang lens. Um, but yes, I think I'm I'm seriously considering picking this one up. I'm not gonna lie. The price is right. Um, so far, their lenses have never. Oh, I have the 24 to 72.8, I have the 85, the 35, I have a 45 f2.8. Um, what other ones do I have? Lens in my tongue, but I use them all for filmmaking, quite honestly. I use them all for filmmaking, and yikes. It is worth every time I, I pull these. I'm just, I, I love it. The 85 1.4 DGDN lens. If you're a Sony user and you don't want to buy the Sony version, I'm telling you, that lens is amazing. It's phenomenal. It's super sharp, well built. You're definitely not slouching. You know, you're like, oh, get a third party lens. No, the thing looks amazing. It's amazing. It's a great lens. So finally, they have the 50 for under 900 bucks. Come on, that's a no-brainer right there. Okay. Uh, Cooley comes in and says, uh, have the 14 to 24 Sigma Arc. Oh, that's a great, that's a great one right there. I almost got that one, to tell you the truth. Um, matter of fact, I, what do I have? I have a 26. You know what? I might still have to get that one, actually. Um, I have to double check if they have the DGDN lens because if you shoot mirrorless, you have a Canon or a Panasonic, you want the DGDN version, which is a full frame digital native art lens. So, the communication the autofocus is as close as to the native versions. And when I'm shooting with Panasonic, the Sigma art lenses, I've had zero issues and amazing results. So, shout out to Sigma. Okay, for making that 50 millimeter, millimeter lens. That's, that's a solid win. So I can't complain. Uh, I'm excited. I think, like I said, I'm going to pick it up uh, eventually. Pi comes in. When I grow up, I'm going, I'm going to go get me a Sigma Art. Um, got a 16 millimeter wide angle on the way, but it's not an art. Well, you know what? That's all right. 16 mil is going to give you some great interesting photos and you know what just to play around because i've done this before take that 16 and shoot portraits with it it's a it's an interesting characteristic of uh photos that you'll create with that super with that wide angle and i've done it before um but experiment because it could either be really bad or come out pretty dope you know so, so experiment sometimes i take unique lenses that you wouldn't do one thing with and then try to do it. Uh, I did street photography. When I first got the Nikon, um, it was the E-mount, what was it? It was the uh, 105 F1.4 lens, which is a magnificent portrait lens. It still is. Uh, but I did street photography with it. It was very interesting um, experience. But the photos were really cool. So, you know, try try something new, you know. Like I said, keep shooting, stay creative, you know, don't allow uh, traditional uses of particular focal lengths to limit your creativity, right? We have another, uh, Daniel comes back. Uh, is Tamron still going to release 17 to 28 G2? 
I'm told I should wait instead of getting the one that's out now. That's a great question. Um, check them out on Twitter. I don't want to say yay or nay. I'm not in tune with um, Tamron as close as I am with some other brands. Um, with Sigma, you know, since I, since I work with um, with Panasonic, right, as a Lumix advocate, you know, it's easier for me to stay in the loop with Sigma Lumix because of their L Mount Alliance. So, but do you have a range? Do you have, you said, uh, if you have, um, if you have a focal range that takes care of the, that, that focal range, at 17 to 28, like if you have a 14 to 24 or something like that, you can hold off for now. I say do so. If that focal range you don't use regularly, then rent the lens until that newer one comes out. You see where I'm going with that? I have, uh, I have all my lenses are Z lenses, but hold on, folks. Look right here. I have all Z lenses, folks. Okay, Daniel, but except this one, which is the uh, fourteen to twenty-four millimeter, right? Uh, Two point eight. This is the old. This is the DSLR full frame. It's a great lens. Still is heavy as hell, but it's a fantastic lens, and um, I still have it. <clears throat> And just because I haven't gotten the, I haven't gotten the, um, the Z version yet, because honestly, I don't even use this one that much to want to hurry up to justify paying for the Z version yet. I'm going to do it. It's not yet. And I haven't had enough reasons to really need it in the Z version yet. Cause I haven't pulled this one out all that much. So what I'm saying is, Think about whether that focal range is something you use regularly. And if you do, okay, maybe you need to pull the trigger sooner than later. But if not, then just hold out and wait for that G2 to come and rent whatever you need in the meantime. Or maybe you already have a zoom lens, medium zoom lens that couples that range for now and just chill. So I hope that, I hope that helps you out. Right. Because uh, the one thing I've learned with companies is with all the rumors out there, nothing's out until it's out, right? Nothing is out until it's out, straight up, okay? Because everybody loves rumors and clickbait, but it doesn't help us out for those who actually want to buy something. So until it's out, it ain't out. Uh, Cooley says, uh, did dog portraits with mine. Oh, okay. See, that's, that could be fun. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, with the 14 to 24. Yeah, that's a great one, especially if the dog move around and whatnot, you know, you're not going to miss them uh, versus, uh, you know, you're going to get them in frame more than likely than versus shooting them at 85 millimeter unless they are just sitting there, right? And they sit still for once. So, yeah, there you go. That's something different. Shoot, shoot some dog portraits with the 14 to 24. Why not? Go for it, right? So back to this here. Um, does anybody out there shoot with Sigma lenses at all? Right? Or have they in the past? Okay. I have with video photos for sure, but definitely I'm really excited about this particular lens. I really am. And no, they have didn't. Um, none of these companies asked me to share any of this stuff. I just wanted to share some great news for you. And because I was very impressed with how much came out in just one week, it's kind of crazy right now, it really is. Um, oh, we have another comment. Uh, Cooley says, "Close up with face." Yeah, definitely do that. But remember, experiment, Cooley. Like, put your phone on wide and then do a selfie, and you can see how the distortion. It's going to really put your nose. It's going to make whatever is close to the lens long, right? And exaggerate and then push everything else back to make the head look almost like it's being crushed on both sides. So, as I said, okay, and what's going to help with uh, to alleviate that is shooting at our uh, closing your aperture, you know, five, six, or something like that. That's why you tend to use those lenses more at five, six, three, uh, 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 or 
F8, stuff like that, to decrease the amount of distortion. If you're shooting at 2.8, wow, it's going to be crazy. But it could be cool, too. So try it out. Um, do you ever use manual focus as opposed to autofocus on your lens? Now, that's a great question, okay? That's a great question, and no. <laughs> okay, I do not. Um, because my eyes are shot. So I need good autofocus. So the reason why I went to Z9, autofocus. I need good autofocus. Um, Lumix, I do shoot manual focus though. Okay, because I do video. I do film work. And a lot of times, um, you know, I use peak focusing, right? And I'm using a bigger monitor, a five inch or seven inch monitor on my rig. And um, I have peak focusing and I practice um, how I'm going to pull and push the focus especially when I'm in pre-production and drawing up my mood boards, I already know the movement and how I need to focus. Um, but um, so, yeah, I only do manual when I'm doing video. That's just me. Okay. Uh, like right now it's a manual and I lock the focus on my face and then we're good to go. So photography, autofocus all day. Cooley says, yes, I have. Oh, awesome. Great. Great, yes. And he says he did it with, oh, for the dog too. Okay, all right. And he does back button focus. Yeah, I, I, I do the top, folk, you know, whatever is good for you, you know. Um, again, that's just for ease of workflow. If you do back button focus, mazel tov. If you do the top, whatever, it's up to you. You know, all these buttons are so programmable nowadays. I wouldn't be surprised if they do a butt, but, but, a butt button focus you know what i mean like they do everything nowadays so it's all up to your workflow and how you like it so that's great i know tons of people do back button focus all day too um i've never gotten used to it because i never started that way i started with the top and that's just what i'm used to uh pie says cool got it exactly so just go out there you know do you but my eyes are shot man so i need that auto focus on my camera when it comes to portrait photography that is a show you know um, okay. Woo. It looks like we answered a lot. We covered a lot. And, um, I appreciate everybody's input. All right. We just went hard in the paint two hours straight. Um, like I said, please take a moment, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to 10 K. I think I deserve 10 K, right? I work hard. I work it out at out here for all of you making the show entertainment entertaining and all um oh i comes in i did purchase my first sigma lens 72 to 50 2.8 for a while that's fantastic that's a great one. uh but not pressing it it's on the chop chopping like uh oh okay well good thing i don't work with i won't take it personal okay um with that said go ahead and like share subscribe all that good stuff please help me brother out uh, if you have any, if you, if you're curious about attending any of my upcoming workshops, make sure you go check out all my workshops at robertsuperphotography.com. I got four of them coming up. Okay. So you definitely want to check that out. Make sure you go ahead and follow me at Robert Silver Photography on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, uh, TikTok, and yes, up to two folks. That's where I'm doing that right now, right along with YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I am on Twitter. Yes. Me. And Elon and I are beating up a storm at Rob Silver Photo Live. And if you like really educated content and you want to support this channel, the best way to do so is subscribing to my Patreon at patreon.com slash Robert Silver Photography. That is the best way to support this so that I can continue to provide you educational entertainment about photography. All right. Uh, be on the look. Feel free if you want to. Uh, check out my latest video, DJI RS3 Mini, on my channel right now. Unboxing and first impression. And my next video I'm going to be recording this weekend is my editing of my first photo shoot using RGB lights. Okay. So if you want to check out my photography, uh, my uh, post production process, yes, definitely be on the lookout for that video. Best way to stay tuned is to subscribe to this channel. All right, so please do so. Smack that like on the way out of here. And on the way out says, when are you doing a live photo shoot? Um, 
That's a great question. I please, I absolutely. Um, I'll let you know. Stay tuned. Okay. Subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting it up very soon. Since I'm heading out to WPPI, um, things are a little wonky because I got a lot of stuff scheduled up there. But thank you for that question. All right. So with that said, until next time, I'm Robert Silver. Until next time, keep shooting. Stay creative. Thank you for watching.